four days we have been doing lot of meditation and lot of uh, messages. This will be our final message and final uh, uh, meditation. Uh, I request Sri Ashok Kumar Garu to give an introduction first. Subhash Bhattacharya Ki, Prasanna Venkatacharya Chaturvedi Gari Ki, Ni Andar Ki, Namaskar Adho. Chaturvedi Swami Garo, Aneka Shastra Lo, Aneka Bhashan Lo, Anargalanga Maniki Vishal Chaptaru Vargurinchi Yanta Chipina Takwe Ipru Mario Ati Kastamida Kerki Rautam Darindi Chala, even the better traffic flow that low, a Murugantan Mundravas in the Taravata Charo, traffic food, distance to Kuntam Vadi, Teloka, Atla Ipa in the Prata Varu, you know Sastra Gurinchi, Telsinavarani, Nago Cheperu, via Telskunavaru, Ekanenu Puni Vishalo. Vari Varu Sabalo Chapton and Vinano, Puni Engineering Vishim, Taravata Shastra Paritnano, Admagnano Vishan Lono, Varu Vatai Katapal Sidga, Kurtu, Yavakasha Nakitan and the Pu, Yandaki, Patriarchi, Varki, Andaki, Putanaki. In this wonderful occasion, wherein we are seeing the resplendent moon and the sky, as well as the inbuilt radiation of our eternal and persistent pursuit on the truth, the reality, infinity and the eternity. We should also be attuned in for excellence with the resplendence of the external tools of luster such as sun, moon and stars. It is known as Antar Jyoti, the internal effulgence. And now let me come to the point of meditation. And as it has been initiated by various scholars pertaining to various schools of yogic thought, it has been deepened by so many people, simplified by so many people, so many demonstrators, accomplishers, they have defined yoga in various dimensional approaches. And there are six golden rules of yoga, which I want to put in a process of a brevity without losing its sense of gravity and depth. The primary rule is, human being, whenever he is subjected to a bondage, he is subjected to the process of both exhaustion of his resources and as well as the process of exploration of the resources and imbibition of the same. So these resources for his physical nourishment, his mental nourishment, intellectual and spiritual nourishment, as he is in bondage, it is dependent on internal and external factors. And there are two main processes. Whenever a person's physical grass or a tangible nourishment or requirement is subjected to imbalance in equilibrium, there is a process of imbibition of the nutrients so as to keep it in ease. Likewise, if the internal subtler tools, if they are lacking of resources, 
that is also a circular process by which the inner resources are balanced so the outer balancing technology by which a person's gross tangible or physical nutrition or resource management is governed is known as medication and the inner requirement is balanced by meditation this is the first explanation of the golden rules of meditation and meditation you know that it has lot of definitions i want to put it as a very practical simple and easily accessible to all different levels of meditations are there the simplified version of the definition of meditation is it must have three qualities uninterrupted potential directed force towards a goal is known as meditation the process by which the thought rays are directed it must be having a direction if it has random movement it is no more a meditation second thing it must be potential if it is imbecile if it is just your desire if it is just your wish if it is just your dream which has not been potentialized by courage commitment confidence care and nourishment by spiritual authorization then that is just a dream daydream or an air castle so it must have potentiality and it must be lack of interruption interruption from internal external circumstantial physical intellectual moral ethical social varieties of issues are there so it must be uninterrupted even if it is for a limited frame time even though incessantly it may, it may be impossible a certain time frame based on a certain goal based on a particular token and target of achievement if it is uninterrupted potentialized and targeted with a directive principle that voltage is known as meditation that is the second rule the third thing what we want to say here is you know that uh, there are questions inside our mind we want to classify about the third rule it is known as the principle of qualitative and quantitative potential study of the mind you are having a doubt it is clarified by a person and it has also come out of the mind of the same person a person is clarifying a doubt and that person's doubt or the skeptic emanation is coming from mind of a person and also the same mental status of a different person it evinces the clarification so both are coming from the same level of human beings but having some inner suddenly you are getting curiosity by which you are asking questions it is known as puru paksha and siddhanta prima phase and solution akshepa samadhana repudiation and vindication shanka pariharana skepticism and clarification so all of these things getting into a problem and getting a solution it comes from the same mind in different levels so that's why we used to say whenever you are in self search if you are there in your primeval search or your peripheral search you will get lot of questions puzzles and riddles if you go inside your inner self you will get the same answers which you are getting from the external sources within yourself so meditation is a process of inner pursuit by means of which whatever the problems whatever the basic things the rudimentary predicaments that we are experiencing in various walks of life in a peripheral approach the same thing comes as the form of the nectar of solution if it is done with a deeper breath that is the third rule of meditation which deals with self search the self search is entirely different from the intellectual search of the western scientific school western scientific school is based on observations experimentation and verification wherever your intellect as it is dependent on sources of knowledge it requires experimentation it requires observation it requires verification then formation of a tenet which frames the basic rudimentary principles of science and application of technology so as intellect is dependent as intellect is incomplete as intellect is a derivative the intellectual search of science it requires dependence on external tools which i have now enumerated whereas self search as self is totally free from the blemish of nietzschean oblivion and various other demarcations as self is the spirit and spark of the ultimate reality and infinity of the universe it is totally immaculate and it clears you from all the vidyate hrate granthi chidhyante sarva samshaya kshiyante chasya karmani tasmin drishte paravare that puts an eternal solution eternal full stop to all of the problem resulting in inexhaustible and final bliss so this is the third rule by which the self search in deeper sensation it gives you solutions so you are having solutions in built for which you need a tool such as shastra 
which is an oral or verbal tool or a shishta, a mobile tool in the form of a preceptor, in form of a practice, in form of certain rules which we have to observe through penance and austerity. So all of these external tools are to reconsider your own self-evaluative study of your introspective truth. So this is the third rule in which you know everything and you have to go deeper and you have to get the resources from external support and authorities. That is the third thing. The fourth major rule, it is meditation. What is the fruit of meditation? Meditation can give anything. The immediate benefit or the most trivial benefit of meditation is contentment. Contentment. It is not producing you all rejoiceable entities that you are dreaming of. It is not making you hyper affluential. It is not only a system of accomplishment. Basically, it starts with contentment. Even if you don't get, even if it is adverse, the process of contentment is the initial boon of meditation. So, starting from implanting satisfaction inside a small heart, till implanting global harmony, even reaching the liberation in eternal bliss, the journey of the benefits of the meditation goes, goes. It is an endless voyage. It starts with a single person's contentment and society's refinement and it broadens to the enlightenment by which a person reaches the spiritual realm, which is known as the salvation or emancipation. These are all the benefits of meditation. Then there is a fourth principle. Now we are coming to the fifth principle. What is meditation? What is the level of meditation? Generally, we think it as uh, meditation means you have to sit, close your eyes and think of something. It is not just like that. Meditation is a discipline and the discipline is multifaceted. In which sitting and then closing your eyes or chanting something is one among the rules of the discipline. So I want to say something. It is a very wonderful golden principle of meditation. Whenever you are born in the world, you are born deficits. We have deficiencies and efficiencies. We have allergy, energy and synergies within ourselves. Likewise, we have to move with people who are distinct from us, who are distinguishable from us, who are different from us, who are despicable and who are deplorable, who are downtrodden. We have to move with a lot of people. So we have to get that art of getting security, fraternity and united prosperity or integral prosperity. Wherever there are evil elements, first you must, before converting them or before making them corrigible or tameable, you must be made secure that you will not be implanted anything from their evil prints. So that is known as security. The second thing is fraternity. We have to move with them and wherever there are elements of higher preposition, there we have to charge ourselves. And wherever people who are inferior to us, we have to charge them in turn. So meditation is a process of establishing global relationship which totally unravels the person's inner mystery as well as it levels the person's imbalances in the society. Wherever there are greater sources, you imbibe knowledge and power. Wherever there are lower surfaces, there you need not show any prejudice, hatredness or adversity. There you can show your love, sympathy. So with a clemential touch, you are approaching the inferiors and with a sense of subservience, you are observing your obeisances towards your greater people by which you are qualifying the whole world. So meditation is a process of leveling the universal disparities. That is the fifth golden rule. And we are having no doubt lot of things about meditation. There are some small fragments of meditation which we have even misconceived as meditation. So somebody may be observing something very closely. So we are thinking that he is meditating. That is attention. You know that there are a lot of qualitative and quantitative nomenclatures. For example, gram, uh, kg, ton, these things are quantitative nomenclatures. Likewise, qualitative nomenclatures are also there. Just a stone is there, marble is there, granite is there, coal is there, lignite is there. A lot of products are there from the same destructive or uh, the various types of distillations from the same products as byproducts are as different uh, various structures observed from the same emanation center. So these things are the nomenclatures of the same thing but with different quality and quantities. Likewise, whenever you move for your thing with aspiration, whenever you move for your thing, you exhibit your zeal to know that that is known as attention. And the second thing is known as concentration. Concentration is often misconceived as meditation. Most of the people they consider that concentration as meditation or meditation even some people they used to interpret it as concentration. So attention is 
just showing your proclivity, your mental inclination towards the thing. One. Number two, concentration is deepening your proclivity, making your curiosity more effective to imbibe, to assimilate and retain the knowledge sources from that element. Meditation is a process of rejoicing those things. Meditation is not a process with effort. Meditation has no effort. All the preliminary projects of meditation, they start with effort. You know that whenever a person seeing a typewriter, he practices with AS, DF, DF, etc. So as soon as the process is over, whenever a person plays a veena or a flute also, initially he may be having some sort of uncomfortability and pain even while movements are there regarding to various uh, tonic scales and various positions, even in a typewriter. Then naturally, when the person thinks of the song, immediately he need not undergo the process of taking the song, framing the lyrics, disintegrating the lyrics into the swara prasthana, then playing those things with swaras and the swaras. That doesn't happen. Immediately, automatically, the mental process of instantaneous conversion converts all sounds into phonetic notes. So likewise, meditation is a process of ease and comfort. So whenever a person feels uncomfortable, whenever a person realizes that he is having his body, its motion, its positioning, etc., that is not a process of meditation. So in attention and in concentration, we feel ourselves. Whenever we feel oneness with the object, whenever we feel that we don't exist, we think that we exist, but we don't exist, we exist with that oneness or the object of our meditation. That is known as meditation. So meditation is different from the fragments of meditation known as attention and concentration. Attention and concentration is very much essential for all of our peripheral and ephemeral procurements. And meditation is required for getting solutions and accomplishments. So normal procuration is possible by attention and concentration and abnormal, supernormal, preternatural accomplishment is possible only by meditation. Then there is a trance, which is more than that. So these things are some of the rules and basic principles of meditation as per the Vedas. Then let us come to some more classification systems of meditation. There are three types of meditation. I have already told a person's potential, uninterrupted and targeted drive is known as meditation. Somebody told me the people, the modern students, they don't have the power of concentration. They don't have attention at all. They are not paying any attention towards their education. They could not do that and they have lost their memory power. It is not so. It is memory or interest or exercise misplaced. Uh, they are very much attentive in cricket matches and they are having a very unfadable and unfading memory, indelible memory uh, towards the cricket, music and wherever the things in which they evince interest. They are having a very wonderful memory even more than their teachers. But that has been placed in a different area, not in the targeted area. That is the problem with that. So there are three types of misplacements. One is a trivial misplacement. Second is infinitesimal misplacement. First, uh, trivial misplacement. Somebody who is interested in a cricket match, they know just the statistical as well as the strategical report of each and everything that happens in a cricket. So that is also the same thing, what we call knowledge or memory or interest or commitment, but that is misplaced in a trivial background. Second thing is infinitesimal. Infinitesimal is in, that is a prudential investment, then money minting, technology, then savings, bond structures, all of these things are there in normal way of life. In modern way of life, they are interested in various things. It is known as infinitesimal meditation, in which we are very uh, careful. We think that we are careful and we are as per planning. We think these things are. Third thing is very dangerous. It is perverted intelligence or person's perverted meditation. Even more than the yogi who meditates for making constructive progress in the society, the same type of meditation with more meticulous care and vigilance is done by terrorists. They are doing the same thing, but that is perverted, that is crooked, that is for the destructive execution of the society. So, the duty of the masters is, at the budding level itself, at the impressionable age itself, this trivial, infinitesimal and perverted, that is a misplaced intelligence or memory or meditation, concentration or this type of fascination of the modern generation, they must be properly channelized and they must be, these aberrant situation must be totally dismantled from the society and they must be put in the proper track and orbit. This is known as a, the three unwanted or misplaced systems of person's attention or concentration. Second thing is there are three levels of meditation. 
somebody may ask what is the use of meditation there is a first level of meditation second level of meditation and third level of meditation the fruit of first level of meditation is self perfection or precision what is the goal of meditation it is self perfection it is a perfection of it is uh, psycho physical physio psychical psycho intellectual epistemo psychological psycho ontological anthro psychological anthro physical whatever may be the different frames that are situated inside they are totalitarian or a complete and consummate precision in all of the systems is the fruit so your immediate requirement is self perfection what is the second level of yoga that meditation deals with rectification and correction of others a person who is qualified in precision and self perfection he tempts to go into the process of correcting others he can charge others he can vitalize and potentialize the people who are sleeping unconscious and who are dead in their spiritual awakening or awareness those people they can be charged they can be just inspired commanded by a person's energy and they can be made as committed and capable citizens of the country that is the second level third level is radiation in which the person can liberate all so each and everybody as a beginner we have got the entry for special salient features by which we are going to take self perfection so this is a three layer system of meditation apart from the layer system of meditation there are three more systems of meditation or types of meditation which we used to say in shastras one is casual meditation which is known as sagada yoga in which you don't perform anything different from what you routinely do generally we do lot of things while eating while sleeping while going here and there in normal motions in normal way of our lives and execution of our routine duties we used to follow something with a different type of thought with a different purpose with a deep mindedness used to do the same commitment that is known as sagada yoga second is pragati yoga or processive meditation in which you take a process and take it as a part of life and meditate casual meditation is a routine way of life in which you live your way of life which is no more different from the process of meditation second is a process of meditation by which you practice it is specified by place time system preceptor institution and instructions and various other paraphernalia so that is the second thing third thing is transcendental meditation which is unlimited which the deepened structure of meditation is transcendental which is if you go inside there is no possibility to come back that type of meditation is there then apart from these three types of meditation basic requirements for meditation they used to say as it is known as pancho pakarana in vedas first thing is conducive atmosphere second thing is comfortable mental setup that must be there so conducive atmosphere is external sources mental setup if you don't have proper mental setup you cannot just sit then convenient positioning then the fourth thing is a competent master fifth thing is comp compatible subservience or undertaking of the master's instruction with obedience and sincerity and honesty so these five things they qualify real meditation so meditation is for two types of people one is a sadhaka and second is a siddha sadhaka is a practitioner and siddha is an accomplisher so if a person starts he must start with a conducive atmosphere conducive atmosphere means it must be devoid of noise you know it must be free from pollution it must be a place like this eh, with the natural scenic vibration just as we see here so that is atmosphere apart from which we used to have some positions convenient position in which our body can be placed it is not only by yogasanas by proper diet controlling our obesity Uh, controlling our movement by proper way of execution of our physical actions so it gives you convenient position then uh, comfortable mental setup we must be prepared and totally dedicated for at least an interim meditation even though not for a total way of uh, surrender or something else at least we must be prepared for an interim subjection towards that material realm and material zone and a compatible subservience towards a competent master must be there these things are known as upakaranas the five major elements which are required for one's yoga then there are one more one more thing is also to be studied one is known as acclimatization and the second is known as selectivity there are two more things to be read along with this what is acclimatization and what is selectivity you select some atmosphere you select a person you select a pose and you select a mental setup and you practice it is at the beginners level this level is known as selectivity if you have good practice 
even if the atmosphere is controversial to your mental setup even though you are uh, totally disturbed in your mental setup even though the master he may not be physically present with you and even the position may not be convenient to you at any position at any place at any time at any circumstance you will be capable to get that um, meditation bliss and meditation experience that type of stages is known as acclimatization if you just make everything conducive to you and if you practice and achieve then you can get the alchemical miraculous power of converting everything to your favor huh? that is the real accomplishment of a yogi and that must be goal of any person because uh, the world is the world is full of odds and we are very limited people 4000 when compared to that of uh, the global population it is very infinitesimal but when compared to that of uh, the present era wherein by the people are totally demoralized thousands of people at this time thousands of people at this time uh, with unfading zeal with the glittering enthusiasm the surrender sincerity and commitment it is really wondrous to see that so, but still the global position is entirely different and we must understand qualitatively we are rich that's what i used to say in all of the conferences if foreigners invaded our country the 30 lakhs people they were dominated not by 15 lakhs or 20 lakhs of people only a few thousands but they were integral and they were forceful they were committed and even if a nation is spoiled by terrorists how many terrorists are there what is the proportion of the terrorists in compared to the population of india so they are committed integrated and they are organized and we are unorganized so the unorganized crowd even though that may be millions and millions they are equal to just a flock of sheep which has no proper direction or energy station so that is the thing so here we have all conglomerated to understand the greatness of meditation as per the shastras so here these type of classifications that throw more light already have been practicing meditation already have been instructed with lot of ideas so understanding more and more things that clarifies so many doubts which we have not known that they existed with us lot of doubts that have been just thronging inside our mind everything will be answered and already whatever the performance that we have been doing that will be deepened that will be broadened widened and that will be revitalized and augmented for hyper productivity that is the greatness of learning more and more even though a person is an accomplisher so an accomplisher is a person who can create a circumstance and a practitioner is a person who is tamed or enslaved to circumstances let us first be enslaved by circumstances gradually we can enslave and tame the circumstances these are all the various classifications of meditation then i want to give two major ideas or two major principles of meditation what must be the goal of each and every person who is meditating the first goal of meditation is meditation itself why we are meditating we are meditating to meditate meditation itself has its own purpose meditation is bliss and meditation is the end of life it is the purpose of life so we are meditating for meditating second thing it is more wondrous it is stupendous to know that the second goal of meditation is to meditate for those who don't meditate number one to meditate that those who don't meditate should meditate it is the second phenomena of meditation alakshitanam ashraddhalunam avishvasthanam api uddharana hetuhu those who don't believe in meditation those who consider it to be very negligible and those who are antagonistic those who are skeptic to the process of thinking about the god with gratitude thinking about the reality of the universe thinking about the global fraternity and universal brotherhood such people they don't deserve existence or survival they just exist they don't survive those who just be there in the world for their material gratification they exist those who want to know something they survive and those who are in the process of knowing something they dwell are those people they live and those who are showing the way for others they only flourish in the world this is the process of existence in the world other people just exist so we must meditate for those who don't meditate that they must also meditate so every day because the limited people of a mass in a particular area on a particular occasion that type of meditation is insufficient it is not inefficient it is insufficient for your global transformation so you meditate that those who are against meditation those who are against the process of repentance 
those who are totally immersed in the process of retaliation and revenge, not in the process of repension, recognition, realization and rectification, they are not in that process. For those people, those who suffer, those who are the victims of terrorism, drought, natural disasters and various other things, we know about a lot of things, now the modern media network that has linked us with each and every global move. So we have to think of them and we have to meditate. Those two principles are considered to be the motto of meditation. Meditate to meditate. Meditate for those who don't meditate and meditate for those who don't meditate that they should meditate. This is the motto of meditation. So apart from this motto of meditation, I want to say something about the integral network of meditation. What is meditation? I have already told by sitting and closing your eyes, it is not meditation. It is a complete network. It is an neural network which comprises of eight limbs, you know, Ashtanga Yoga. First of all, your person must be qualified with its external and internal restraint. That is known as Yama and Niyama. So unless your person is qualified, you see, making your body flexible, Moving the body is flexible, that happens in various occasions. In dance, we move our body. That is cultural movement. In puja, punaskara, everything, we move. That is known as mudra. Or yaga bhava, or puja bhava. In that also, we have movements. That is in the process of pradikshana, in the process of namaskara, in the process of avahana, upasthana, visarjana, and various other executions and rituals, we move our body, some parts of the body. Dance, we move most of the parts of the body. And in athletics, we move our body. Specified movement of the body is there. In gymnasium, we move our body. In wrestling, the body, it plays the major role. So, body is moved in various positions as per the requirements in various skills. What is the difference between those skills and their movements correlated to the movements of yoga, asana? So, it is the movement. Athletic is the movement for execution of the particular act. It may be jumping, which is known as a target acquisition. Common it is known as target acquisition. I want to touch this. I want my product to reach that target. So this is known as target acquisition. Gymnastics, it is a show. And dance, all the bhavas are shown in various motions which exhibit the various rasas inside. So each and every movement has its own particular purpose. So the movement of the yogasana, the various postures of the human body in yoga shastra, it is nothing but making the body flexible enough to be a good receptor and reflector of divinity. That movement is entirely different from the movement that is exhibited in various other things. So if you want to just move your body for your physical celebrity, if you ask some person, like a great wrestler or like Muhammad Ali, if you ask the person that he is interested, whether he is interested in self-realization or not, that is entirely different. His goal is entirely different. So the goal of moving the body or positioning the body in various postures in Yogasana is for its spiritual adaptivity, spiritual reflection and spiritual receptivity. So for that it must start with Yama and Niyama. So a person must be well trained in Yama and Niyama. If a person is not well trained in Yama and Niyama, the process of restraint, then movement of his position, that is the body like Marjarasana, Shashasana, then Mrigasana, just he is keeping the body in the position of, for example, in Dhanurasana, he resembles a bow. Marjarasana, he resembles a cat. Shashasana, he resembles a rabbit. So, what is the difference between a rabbit which is always there in Shashasana and a person who just occasionally does the Shashasana? So, Shashasana and Marjarasana, various postures of these animals which we occasionally keep without any realization it is going to give a result. All the asanas are permanently, persistently done by those animals, depicted, exhibited by those animals. What benefit do they get? So first it must start with yama and niyama, control of senses. Then if a person has the authority of control over his senses, he is qualified for asana. That person's asana is said to be the real asana, the fruitful asana. And a person who has qualified his body and his bodily motion and complexity under his control, that person only, only can have the caliber to deal with his vital body or his pranic body. So the pranayama and pratyahara is possible only by a person who has received the asana siddhi by attaining yama and niyama. This procedure is not there. We used to always say that, for example, if there is a person playing some game like bar game in which the persons used to jump in bar in circus, they are having physical fitness, they are having experience, they are having alternative bars, they are having persons to catch. Even if they fall down, they are having a protection net. So they are having a fullness integral system. So for qualifying 
also as a protection shield, also as a booster, the yogic system, all the eight limbs, they are totally interrelated. And now we are seeing to totally the persons uh, different in the system of yogic practice in the society. Persons without knowing anything about Yama and Niyama, thinking Yama is that God. They don't know anything about Yama and Niyama. Directly they go into asana. And Pratyahara is not known in the society, Pranayama is ruling. And Dhyana is there, and without Pranayama, Yama, Niyama, direct Dhyana is there. The purpose of Dhyana through Dharana and Samadhi does not exist. So the integral system of understanding, first, the person's qualified restraint, which potentializes his body to be spiritually adaptive, then if the physical body, the grass body is adaptive, his vital body, the prana sharira will also be adaptive. If both of the things are under control, then dhyana mind can be kept in control. Then dharana, the vijnana can be kept in control. Then samadhi, the ananda status, the bliss status can also be kept in control. So it is a totalitarian study of the school of mysticism in which all play equilateral and equipotential role. It is known as a consummate system of yogic thought. So no doubt, you have to start with some process of meditation or few asanas, but by understanding the substratum as well as the purposes, the previous steps as well as the goals that you have to complete must be enrolled for getting the fullest success. Then the second thing, apart from this integral system, there are a lot of systems of yogic thought and depending upon your person's taste, desire and background they can select. First thing is the eastern and western schools of study of mind and mind control and intellectual research, self-search etc. We are having ancient and modern systems. Now, Brihaspati, it has been told that there was a Barhaspati Samhita of Yoga Shastra in which uh, there is no mention about God and it is a system of atheistic school of thought of yoga. And Lakshmi Narasimha, that is the Narasimha Devata, he has initiated, he is known as Yoga Narasimha, he has initiated a pathway in which there is a devotion towards Lakshmi Narasimha for accomplishing this mystic success. And Yogeshwara, Krishna, he himself he propounded Karma, Jnana, Bhakti, Prapati Yoga, various type of yogas for understanding divinity and attaining the same. Meditation is for three things. One is for understanding, second is attainment and third is for distribution. So the more you meditate, you understand. The more you understand, you can attain. The more you attain, you have to distribute. These three things are the goals of the schools of thought. Generally, they have classified the goals of mysticism as these three things. Then apart from this, there are two schools of thought also. One is the autonomous school of thought and second is the lineage. Lineage means it comes on parampara, like Patanjali Yoga Shastra, it comes on parampara. Autonomous schools of thought, lot of modern schools of thought are the different type of people. Isha Yoga Mayam, you know that Vedatri Maharishi, he started uh, uh, some free space, he, he called it Jatakanta and Jivakanta Shakti and Akasha is the Parabrahman in his school of philosophy, Vedadriyan philosophy, Magesh Yogi's philosophy. There are innumerable schools of thought, modern schools of thought, they exist. And the atheistic and theistic schools of thought, they also do exist. Considering a God and taking into consideration his structure, it is known as contemplative school of thought, in which there is a Devata Upasana. And uh, we classify these things as, uh, that is Shakriya, the six tools or the six limbs. One is Pujana, by means of worship. Second is Bhajana, which is Nadopasana. Then Havana, which is on the basis of uh, rituals. Archana, by idol worship. Then uh, Kshetradana by pilgrimages, Upasana by Antardhyana. So these things are the six schools of thought that existed in our Vedic way of life. So these type of schools, they do exist. Apart from which, I want to conclude this session by saying that there are three uses, three utilities for meditation. One is the immediate utility, second is the immediate utility, and third is the remote utility or the most broadened utility. The immediate utility is we must have three qualities basically in our life and uh, these qualities only enrich our relations and their permanence. One is uh, adjustability, second is adaptability, third is upgradability. Adjustability is even in, in areas of conflict or imbalances, trying to make ourselves attunable to the situation is known as adjustability. And adaptability is even without adjustment directly capable of being uh, a capable tool, the potential tool to handle any situation that is known as adaptability. Upgradability is a situation in which we can upgrade ourselves and also we can upgrade others. So if a person can adapt things, if a person can self-upgrade or upgrade others, endo-upgradation and exo-upgradation. If a person can adjust, can adapt things, 
and, and also upgrade things. Adjustability is not hyper adjustability. It does not mean that even if uh, somebody will be drinking or somebody will be doing all sorts of nonsensical works, we must be adjusting or adapting the same thing. There we have to use the tool of upgradation. So adjustability must be on the grounds of adjustable areas. And wherever there is adaptability possible, we have to adapt. And wherever there is a yeah, quality inheritance that is weakened inside a person, there the person's morale, the person's restraint or uh, self repension or uh, thinking process that must be enriched by means of an upgradability from your spiritual radiation. So we must have these qualities of adjustability, adaptability and upgradability. Without which we suffer in four relations. Generally we have relations, but four bondages are there. One is the bondage between wife and husband and second is between parents and children. Third is between the struggle between the syllabus and the students, students and the masters, masters and the parents, students and the parents. We have that of academic conflicts. And apart from that, the subjects and the ruler, the subjects of the nation and the ruler. So whenever in mass, it cannot be possible just by a dusk and it cannot be just envisioned in the dawn. But if it is instilled, if the seeds are sown today, suddenly within a decade, it did not require even a century, which it required before the media era. Now with these tools of later advent, we can reach the mass society, we can get into the deeper hearts and we can get that transformation by which the family relations and academic relations, matrimonial relations and the social relations can be well strengthened by meditation. Meditation has the immediate work of dealing with these, all of these repairing technologies which is very much demanded by this era. The second thing is mediate. Even if a person, he applies science and technology, number one. Second thing is political enrichment or good governance. Third thing is energy resources management. So certainly we have to conduct a five days or six days workshop in which talented people can be brought in each and every subject. How meditation can be brought into energy resource management. How meditation process can cater to the need of a good governance, science and the technology. Then relationship management, rehabilitation, right, drug addiction, prisoners rehabilitation, terrorist rehabilitation, etc. Then even athletic success. I have been invited by the Athletic Research Institute of Ahmedabad to deliver a lecture on the role of consciousness and its application for athletic success by the Olympic Research Committee. So, if the persons do meditation, meditation is a broader thing, even though not for emancipation, even for their success, within their limited principles or desires, they can execute meditation. Gradually, they can be upgraded to the level of thinking about God or universal spirit. So, for athletic success also, it can be. These things are immediate things. Likewise, we can also cater to the need of the universe. How global warming is there? More than these inventions are the green belt technology or the greenery technology, by our meditation we can purify the ozone. Somebody must establish a research institute because it is a, an empirical era. You establish a research institute and have a satellite connection of understanding the ozonic inputs and by mass meditation just as Magarishi Magarishi is doing for this uh, terrorist uh, rehabilitation or uh, counter-terrorism activities and for global warming large that of projects they do have. We must have a satellite, we must have a latest center for research, we must have also our own info school, edu stack and e-learning systems by which this knowledge must be impacted to the various corners of society. Therein by empirically we can prove that uh, this uh, mass integral federated and uh, unanimous call, cry and craving of good vibrant souls will awaken the global spirit and certainly it will be answered by a fruitful result. It must be made known to the society by empirical demonstration that we have to do in the form of even this place is what here we can establish. I feel that uh, within few years a research institute may be installed here. So global warming that is also a big problem to the society. Then war, terrorism that is also there. Natural disasters are there. There we can preventively we can meditate because uh, the lot of seismic zones and the tectonic, tectonic uh, plate oscillations have been predicted by these uh, seismographies. Now we can meditate for those benefits and uh, certainly that does work. And uh, apart from these things, epidemics and fatal diseases, inter-religious harmony and international relations. These six things are very much essential for the world. So starting from your adaptability, adjustability and upgradability of yourself and science, technology, athletic and other success for the nation and society, and ending with the global warming problems and natural and artificial disasters, epidemic and fatal diseases, inter-religious harmony and international relations. We can achieve anything by meditation if it is pure, if it is properly directed, if it is properly nourished, if it is properly irrigated by a vigilant and merciful master. Certainly it is possible. 
so this is the ultimate goal of meditation and uh, we have to establish two committees one is uh, the benefactor second is the beneficiary all like minded people they must integrate together i already told in on terrorism uh, conference i told that there is only difference between terrorists and patriots the patriots they seldom see and meet each other and discuss they just speak in the platforms and they just go away they just speak in the platforms and they just go away the terrorists they have a common network daily they contact with each other through mail or through fax or through phone they regularly contact till their goal is accomplished the destruction is accomplished they used to have regular contact all like minded people i may have some personal philosophy even though we belong to the sri vaishnava vishishta advaita sampradaya that is my personal belief and i used to instruct everybody the same as well as the global benefit is concerned i used to say it as common binding instinct if 50 persons travel in a bus they will be thinking about lot of things i want to go for a marriage i want to go for shopping i want to purchase this and that if the bus is falling from a dam or bridge at that time everybody will be having a common binding instinct that they must be saved and they must save each other that is not a common binding instinct so even though we are different even though we are distinct by our principles still i accept that there must be a global renaissance a global transformation so with a common binding instinct we must be ready we must put aside all of our personal beliefs personal uh, restrictions and demarcations it does not mean that we can throw it away having that in our mind still we can coexist and cooperate and establish a peaceful and prosperous society so we have to establish a center for benefactors and we have to concentrate on three people one is the pregnant people for whom we have to meditate that they must possess good issues and the second thing is newly born child they must be done with good samskaras so that they will shine as good citizens and youngsters and boys they must be totally concentrated if the pregnant new born najata sabjojata jata if these three civilizations are not considered by us then we have to work for several centuries to reform this society those people they are energetic they are going to form the future society let us meditate wherever we can execute by our action we can do that wherever we cannot reach by time distance space and other limitations we can meditate for that mass so that they can be either tamed or trained or at least tameable and trainable that we have to meditate first then let us start the purna yoga that's what i used to say purna yoga is complete yoga the yoga system which deals with all of these things which answers to all questions which embraces all persons who are shivering with fear insecurity immoral and various other ugly and evil hits of the society it must give solace it must give shelter it must be a shield and armor of protection that type of yoga sista is purna yoga and whatever that deals with your personal uh, development or progress or institutional development is apurna yoga so let us concentrate for your purna yoga and this is an occasion in which the purnima not only shines outside in the sky also in your endoclasmic reticulum wherever it shines in your mind endoclasmic reticulum means it is your chidakasha in your inner resplendent moon that i have already referred in my prologue let the moon let the knowledge let the intellect shine in your minds and let the ultimate reality the embodiment of superior and unconditional blemishless mercy and craving for the upliftment of the mankind the whole society that is the paramatma the brahman whom we call as narayana let him shower his benedictory nectar on all of you for self realization perfection narayana narayana meditation and uh, thank you very much sir thank you very much and i thank sri ashok kumar garu for his special efforts to make this uh, uh, meeting uh, possible uh, to to be able to get sri chaturvedi garu uh, to this distant place is an achievement in itself and uh, uh, we are sure that in future also will be taking his abundant wisdom uh, at every uh, opportune occasion uh, we thank you very much sir and uh, we wish that you come again and again spend as much time as possible here to do whatever you want here in terms of increasing the energy of this place and uh, this place is meant as a world center for meditation this is called as dhyana vidya vishwanand world center world temple 
for the science of meditation, jnana vidya. Uh, so the science of meditation is one and the same, it can be two. Uh, you, you are a past master of science of meditation. So my dear friends, the science of meditation, as Swamiji said, it has got multiple benefits at multiple levels and it is the save us, vitalize ourselves, upgrade us, everything. So on this great occasion of Buddha Pavanima, we are indeed very happy. Small memory. Thank you very much, sir. If he, if he agrees to, then we'll go ahead for our meditation uh, and uh, one hour meditation will do. Okay? My pleasure. Let's so arise and begin with your observing the breath. Exactly one hour of meditation we will do. Okay, you can see Chaturvedan first one and pump it down. <laughs> 